are back at it. And today I am remote. I have a lot of things to do today. But I want to get on the story of Ahab and Jezebel. You see, the Christians, they serve two gods. They serve two masters, okay? They have this religion that is called the Father and Son. And that religion is the largest religion on the planet. And that founder of that religion is none other than Paul. You see, Christians serve Jezebel. They serve Jesus and Paul. And they fail to realize that they don't serve Jesus. They serve the false Jesus, and that is Paul. He is the twin brother of the prophet Isa, and he is the father in Christ Jesus. Now let's go to 1 Kings 21. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth, this man was named Naboth. This man was a righteous man. And notice he has both in his name. This is going into the two golden calves. The Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. And Ahab spoke unto Naboth, saying, Give me the vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house. And I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. And Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. So here we have a picture of what Paul did to Christ. Paul stole the inheritance of Christ. Now that story of Jacob and Esau is going into Paul and Esau. You see, Paul stole the inheritance of the prophet Esau. That's why he is called the wolf in sheep clothing. Just like Jacob, covered in hair, pretending to be his brother Esau. This is the exact same thing what Paul is doing. He is pretending to be his brother Esau. Okay, when I say Esau and Esau, it's all going into a metaphor. So bear with me. Now let's go to verse 4. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased. Because of the word which Naboth, the Jezreelite, had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would eat no bread. So he was sad. You see, the Israelites always wanted two gods. They always wanted two golden calves. They always wanted a king. The children of Israel always wanted the son to die for the father's sins. Now, let's go to verse 5. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? And he said unto her, Because I spake unto Naboth, the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Dost thou now govern the king of Israel? So his wife told him, Are you the king of Israel or what? Are you the king or what? His wife had to be the king for him, okay? Now, this is going into the religion of Christianity. I want to read that part again. And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Does thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? In the Daquan Clay translation, I will put, Are you the king, nigga, or what? <laughs> Are you the king or what? Arise and eat bread, and let thine heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth, 
the just were like. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name. This is exactly what's going on in Christianity. And this is exactly what Paul did with his 13 letters. And sent the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in his city dwelling with Naboth. And she wrote in the letters saying, proclaim a fast and set Naboth on high among the people. Now that's exactly what Paul did. Okay, he did what Ahab did with Jehoshaphat. He told Jehoshaphat, you put on your royal robes and I'll go in disguised. Okay, he made it seem like Jesus was the king when really he was the king. Going on, it said two men, sons of Baal. See, these two men is going into the pair, is going into the parables. It is going into the two golden calves. It is going into the father and son religion we call Christianity. Sons of Baal. See? B-A-A-L. Jezebel. Jesus and Paul. Before him. To bear witness against him. Saying, thou didst blaspheme God and the king. And then carry him out. And stone him that he may die. And the men of his city, even the elders and the nobles who were with the inhabitants in his city, did as Jezebel had sent unto them. And it was written in the letters which she had sent unto them. They proclaimed a fast and set Naboth on high among the people. Now, this is exactly what Paul did to Christ. Paul exalted Christ to a position. Now he has to come down from that position. You see, Jesus is not God. And it is all Paul's fault that the prophet Isa has to die at the last day. This will be the killing of the firstborn. And the reason why Jesus has to die at the last day is all because of Paul. Paul Put Jesus up on high. Okay. He made him Lord. And now. Isa is going to have to be put to death. By God Almighty. At the last day. See that's why we weep. That's why we mourn. That's why we will cry. At the last day. This is a sad story. That the prophet Isa has to die. All because of Paul. Now ask your pastor about this, they're clueless. Ask your camp leader about this, they're clueless. Ask Nathaniel, the so-called most powerful man in the Bible. Yeah, right. Ask Nathaniel. Ask Nathaniel about this. Why would they be crying at the last day if Jesus has triumphed? No, he didn't. It was a big lie. It was a big scam by the false prophet, the wolf in sheep clothing, we know it's Paul. So Paul was the man. I'm concluding. Paul was the man that caused the prophet Isa to die. Okay. And the prophet Isa will die a natural death because he had a supernatural birth. Everybody thought he was God, courtesy of Paul. But what's going to happen? Everybody's going to know that Jesus is no God when God Almighty causes the prophet Isa to die. So, verse 13, it reads, And there came in two men, children of Baal. See the two men, the two calves, okay? The father and son. This is a picture of Christianity. And set before him and the men of Baal witness against him, even against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme God and the king. Then they carried him forth out of the city and stoned him with stones that he died. Then they sent to Jezebel saying, Naboth is stoned and is dead. And it came to pass when Jezebel heard that Naboth was stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, which he refused to give thee for money. For Naboth is not alive, but dead. See, 
I'm going to do a part two to this. And you're going to see that this is nothing but Christianity. Okay? The prophet Isa was killed on biblical record by the apostate Paul. And it is a lie. The prophet Isa is not dead. He hasn't died yet. And the Christians stole, they stole the kingdom all because of what Paul did. And this is the truth, okay? Now, we're going to get back to this, but I want you to meditate on this and I want you to understand that there's nothing new under the sun. For the last couple months, I've been telling you stories and stories and stories of the same thing in many of the stories in the Hebrew scriptures. There's nothing new under the sun. Okay? The story of Jacob and Esau is a picture of this. The story of Cain killing Abel is a picture of this. Okay? So, have a good day and assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the truth. If you're in the Israelite camps, I suggest you run out of there. Get out of there. They ain't nothing but Negroes. They ain't nothing but niggas. They have not even changed their old ways, okay? These Israelite camps don't even want to debate. They want to fight. They talk about how much they love their brothers. But all they want to do is fight against their brother, okay? They don't even want to fight against Esau. They want to fight against their brothers. They want to hate the nation of Ishmael. They hate the Arabians, but they love their friendly neighborhood oppressor. Okay? The Israelite movement is a joke. Okay? Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.